Hello again and welcome to KabbalahDecoder.com. My name is Rabbi Moshe Miller and um, this is part of a series of ongoing videos, short videos, describing some of the basic tenets and ideas of Kabbalah. This is the second in the series, in the introductory series. In the previous video, we mentioned that the earliest aspect of Kabbalah was revealed as natural wisdom, which was real to Adam and subsequently passed down through the generations. Later on, possibly from the time of Abraham onwards, but for sure from the time of Moses, from Moshe Rabbeinu, from the time of Moses, and the giving of the Torah, the Bible, the five books of Moses, this wisdom was now encoded as divine wisdom. There's a difference between natural wisdom and divine wisdom. It's spoken about, we mentioned, that Abraham sent gifts to the East. One of the Kabbalistic traditions is that he sent the gifts of natural wisdom to the East, but he kept the tradition of divine wisdom. And that was for sure encoded at the time that the Torah was given. What's the difference between the two? Natural wisdom is essentially the insight into the inner dimensions and working of things. Divine wisdom is not only deeper insight and deeper than natural wisdom, but is also an insight into the purpose of existence and the spiritual laws and statutes, so to speak, that govern and regulate existence, physical existence included. Now, we mentioned that there are three er eras of Kabbalah Kabbalistic development, by which we mean that the theoretical underpinnings of Kabbalah, which began primarily with the Zohar, written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, second century. Um, I also mentioned in the last video that for an exposition of the authorship, the authenticity of the authorship of the Zohar, see kabbalahonline.org. And look there for the article, Authenticity of the Zohar, or search for my name, Rabbi Moshe Miller. In any event, the Zohar was written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in the second century, and his students subsequently added to the corpus. All of these teachings were summed up and elucidated in a very seminal work by the great famous Kabbalist, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero, 1522 to 1570, also known as the Ramak. The Ramak is the initial letters of his name, Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. And he wrote the, the work, amongst many others, but the seminal work that we're talking about here is called Pardes Rimonim, in which he summed up the entire corpus of teachings from the time of the Zohar until his time. The next era of Kabbalah was initiated by the Rizal, Rabbi Yitzhak Luria, who lived uh, from 1534 to 1572. And the tradition was continued with his students, particularly Rabbi Chaim Vital, his chief disciple, and the codifier of his teachings in Kabbalah in general. Then the third era of Kabbalah was initiated by Rabbi Yisrael Baal Shem Tov. Baal Shem Tov means the master of the good name, and we'll speak much more about him later on as well. He lived from 1698 to 1760, and he introduced this new aspect of Kabbalah at the behest of his teacher, his spiritual teacher, who was actually one of the prophets of Israel of old, a teacher named Achia Hashiloni. The soul of Achia would teach him Torah, as we will discuss in subsequent lessons. The tradition was continued by his disciples and remains the latest development of Kabbalah today. Now, these three different approaches to Kabbalah are three different areas of primary study and innovation. The first era, the era that ended with the Ramak and his Sefer Pardes, or Moshe Cordovero and his Pardes, focuses on the concept of what is called Hishtal Shalut. Hishtal Shalut really speaks about the devolution rather than the evolution, because we're talking about from non-being to being, from 
higher a higher spiritual status to a lower spiritual status so it's called devolution or yishtalshalut the word yishtalshalut is from the word shalshelet which means a chain and it's sometimes called in the literature the great chain of being from right at its beginning the beginning right at the beginning of creation which is the highest of the worlds called adam kadmon the first world after the constriction the symptom again a concept we'll talk about later so this discusses how things came into being, their inner structure, and the development from one another. This is the tradition all the way from the Zohar to the Ramak, the Rabbi Moshe Kodovero, and it is remains somewhat of a static study in the sense that they're studying, uh, to a very large extent, the history of existence spiritual existence as well as physical existence but it's more sort of historical in nature so to speak the next era which we said was the era of the arizal rabbi yitzhak luria is called hit love shoot hit love shoot means enclosement from the word lavush enclosement what it speaks about primarily are the interactions of various spiritual profiles or to use the technical term Pratsufim, and the dynamics of change and interaction. This is the second great development, and it is much more of an interactive type of approach than the initial approach, which was called Hishtal Shalut. So Hitlaf Shut is an enhancement and advancement of many of the ideas spoken about in the Zohar and subsequent works, but discussing the interactive quality of these subjects and concepts mentioned earlier. Finally, we get to the era of the Baal Shem Tov, and his primary focus was on what is called Hashra'ah. Now, Hashra'ah is sometimes, sometimes translated as omnipresence. Why? Because it discusses the omnipresence of God. That is the focus, is the omnipresence of God, the presence of God in and surrounding everything. However, it also means inspiration. The word hashra'ah also means inspiration. And the focus, therefore, is on serving God, on serving the Creator in an inspired and uplifted manner. So those are the three general periods, the eras of Kabbalah and their development, and we will speak more about each of them and about the approaches in subsequent lessons. This is being Kabbalah Decoded. I'm Rabbi Moshe Miller. Please visit our website at kabbalahdecoded.com. There is a blog there. There may be some interesting articles that um, you will find enlightening. Thank you, and see you in the next recording.